Hello, and thank you very much for tuning in. My name is John Michael, and today we're going to be talking about video games, so the more specifically violent video games here. So here we have some footage of, you know, the really incredible, you know, the, the details of it. It's very, very lifelike, uh, you know, compared to, you know, even 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it was nothing like this. So we're going to talk about the video games uh, today. So my topic of discussion is video games, you know, more specifically violent video games. Um, you know, explicit scenes of gore and death. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Myths or misinformation associated with vi video games, according to the APA, are that the research has yielded mixed results. Um, weak methodology found significant detrimental effects on the mind of video game addicts. And, you know, this is a real thing, addicts. Uh, irrelevant field and laboratory experiments, as well as the idea that no studies, there are no studies linking violent games to serious aggression. So this is basically what we're going to talk about today. It, does the video games create um, people to, or, or does it cause people to become violent or aggressive? Um, so other misinformation includes the idea that unrealistic video game violence is completely safe for um, young uh, young teens and young, young adults, and um, it affects only a small fraction of players. So, you know, there you go. They got, uh, you know, some some blowing up and stuff like that. You, the, you see the people actually blowing up, but there's some unrealistic video games too, like um, zombies or monsters and stuff like that. You know, there's still still blood. Maybe it's green blood, but, um, you know, see, you got, you got these uh, footage of people actually dying here. So, I mean, it could, um, it could be detrimental to uh, the mental health of, of people. Does it cause PTSD? You know, so the Guardian reports that video games do not lead to violence or aggression according to a reanalysis of data gathered from more than 21,000 21, young people around the world. After studies were re-examined, uh, the new report published in the Royal Society Open Science found that, when the, found that when the correlation between gaming and violence was below um, the threshold to count uh, as... So it, it, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to, to distinctly say, yes, there is... Um, a link between you know video game violence and aggression. Right? Uh, so the hypothesis that violent games have a meaningful long-term predictive impact on youth aggression cannot be supported, according to the article. Here, and we'll go through all the 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 the, the links there in a minute. Um, scholarly article. So so we have some misinformation. We have some um, news paper clips, and then we have scholarly articles. Uh, so one it includes here nailing the coffin shot on doubts that violent video games stimulate aggression. So uh, this one suggests um, there's no question that the, the player or a large percentage of users will develop an, an increased risk, an increased risk to be, behave more aggressively. So they will actually be, become more aggressive. Um, our society has seen an emergence of the mass visual media as a fundamental element of most children's socialization experiences experiences and this has been one of the most dramatic changes in child rearing that has occurred so you know the uh, the, uh, the the children they see all kinds of stuff on TV and it wasn't like that you know 50 years ago it wasn't like that 300 years ago there was only what you could see in your living room but now uh, you know there's uh, especially cell phones now the kids don't have a little cell phone so uh, it, 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 it's, it's gonna be a, it, the world is changing so we have to deal with what's going on here uh, so the article correctly points out that it requires a tortuous logic to believe that children and adolescents are affected by what they observe in their living room through the front window of their house in their classroom in their neighborhood and among their peers but not but are not effective uh, affected by what they observe in movies, television, and then in, especially in the video games here. So in the realistic video games, you're, for sure kids are going to be affected by this kind of stuff. I mean, this is real. I, I, it, it looks like real life. I mean, you, you, you can't um, expect a child that is growing up to just, uh, you know, not be affected. There's going to be some effects. Here, so. I mean, this, you know, so, so we have both sides of, of the story with two, two completely different um, conclusions basically so another scholarly article this is your brain on violent video games here. Um, so we're not going to go through all this here so for the sake of time but you know there, there's uh, in the past violent video games featured cartoonish characters and stylized blood and gore 
Um, you know, in the past, you know, when I was growing up, there was Final Fantasy, and uh, you know, it was, it was pretty good. I mean, there was like uh, monsters and all that stuff, but it, w it wasn't, uh, you know, very, very graphic. You know, in detail shooting and stuff like that. I mean, there was a Gold Bond. Uh, Gold Bond is that his name? J James Bond. James Bond. Goldeneye. Yeah. Uh, so there's a little bit of first person uh, shooting and stuff like that just coming out. Uh, but prior to that, there was there was nothing like that. So you know, Grand Theft Auto and stuff like that. But now we you see these uh, very, very violent video games here. Um, so violent defenders who have been linked to video games include the Columbine shooters. Uh, the uh, Daniel here, Daniel Petrick, uh, he was 16 years old and, and he committed murder in Nehemiah Griego. And of course, Justin Bork. So Justin Bork was actually, um, he's the, the he, he, he killed the RCMP officers. Uh, so I get the case law here linked uh, below. So we're going to go through that right now. Uh, after this concludes, this is my conclusion here. Our generation has been blessed and cursed with incredible technology that can generate lifelike images in the palm of our hands. As the technology itself, itself, or yeah, if the te as the technology isn't good or evil in itself, right, the content that can be distributed can certainly be. It's important to remember that past generations have also been suggest subjected to evil ideolo ideologies that were distributed onto the population simply with pen and paper. A notable example is, of course, Mein Kampf. This work contains no visuals at all, yet um, is responsible for radicalizing a large fraction of the population. Instead of studying the specific specific issues that plagues our society, maybe we should look at the greater question of youth influence. Uh, so there's uh, my resources here, so we're just going to go through that right now. So this is the American Psychological Association, uh, so violent video games here. And uh, so this is the, the Guardian, the, the um, newspaper clip. Right? Uh, so video games see, do does not lead to violence or aggression. Uh, so if, there you got the, um, the the you know people that are uh, murderers whose, whose killings have linked to to video games. Um, you know, oh, they're, they're here. oh yeah, this is the scholar scholarly articles here that I uh, linked here. Below. The, this is your brain on violent video games here desensitization, and uh, this is the case law of um, Justin Bork here. Uh, so I've linked that. Uh, so this is actually a good read. I would encourage anybody to read this. It's pretty good. Uh, he he's he got 75 years with no parole. So I mean he's going to be in there for he's going to be in the jail here. And this is of course Mein Kampf. So uh, this is definitely you know it, it's not it it's you can you can radicalize people without having violent video games. You, you know this is a, this is a, some pretty serious stuff there as you can see here. So. All right. So that's uh, that's my. Um, that's my presentation. Thanks all for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. See you guys.